We are literally a minutia away from having that bad boy planted into the car. Let's go over, you know, exactly the, the very minor things we have left to do. Well, welcome back to New Guy's Garage. Here we are. She is practically a complete engine. Now, what engine is this? For all of you who are new, you're probably like, hey, what do we got going on here, right? You know, I'm halfway interested. You know, I've seen the thumbnail. I look, what, what do we got? And for all of you who have been following this build for the past about three years now, uh, you're probably like, oh, for crimity sakes, just get her done already. Yeah, quit dragging it on, right? Well, you know, we're almost to that point, as a matter of fact. This is our 308 small block Ford Nitrous Windsor build. And uh, we're building this for our 1965 Ford Mustang, the Iron Horse. Uh, this is actually the engine that came out of the Iron Horse last fall we did on a live stream. Me and my brother Tom from New Guys Guitar. So what did, 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 is Dan okay? So far, he's, he's underneath the engine, literally underneath the It hasn't been crushed yet. Oh, good, good. Well, know, everybody is so damn paranoid. You can't, you could never, you, I don't know how you all get anything done being that paranoid. I mean, you've got, uh, it's still resting on the engine mounts, right? Well, the yeah, engine mounts are broken, so I don't have to undo them. That, that's, that's why I'm saying, hey, you might not want to be underneath there, but you know, hey. Uh, so, I mean, you've got nothing better to do. You can check that out. And it's, it's actually pretty funny. But, you know, today... We are just very close to having this thing in the car. Actually, it's ready to go into the car right now. Uh, there's just a few things I want to do while it's out of the car, just because it's easier, right? Otherwise, it can go in the car right now and I can finish buttoning it up. Uh, things left to do are we're going to silicone down our uh, blender plate, our adapter plate, rather, that we made for the nitrous plate. You'll see that in just a second. Uh, engine mounts. I have brand new engine mounts because, well, frankly, the old ones were both broken. So, you know, that's, uh, it, that, that was the thing. So we're going to go over the engine mounts. I got them from a company called Cardi.com. They sent me brand new engine mounts because, well, they frankly didn't want me reusing the old broken ones so we'll go over that as well and i think we're going to finish it off with sending off project xmc which is our carburetor or more specifically this carburetor our flow test mule uh sending that off to joseph nowak so i think we're going to finish off the video by sending that off to have flow tested more on that in a bit but let me bring you in here and i'll show you what we got going on with this adapter plate now, as I said, this is a nitrous build. This is our nitrous plate. And as you can see, we did some port work on this intake. Actually, this intake has been fully ported with these AFR Renegade heads. Uh, but we did the porting up here also. And, you know, we rounded all this off. We made this all nice and round because this was just blocky square edges before. Blocky square edges, not the best for airflow. We have a problem, though. I mean, look, we got big flat edges here, we got flat edges around there, you know, it, the nitrous plate just doesn't fit the actual opening of this intake manifold very well. So to remedy that, we made this, the adapter plate. We ported this thing out. This started life as a four-hole spacer, and we've cut it, hacked it, grinded on it, until we finally got to the point, if I can put it on here, yes... To where, now obviously we ported it on the intake manifold, but we essentially made these two things one. You can kind of see, you know, what we got going on here now. This spot right here is just a little bit of JB Weld because this plate, believe it or not, 
is porous. I mean, it, it was, uh, it's not like a really great casting or anything. Uh, we broke through, so we just filled that with a little bit of JB Weld. It will be perfectly fine. The fuel will not destroy it. It will be perfectly good. Trust me. I have seen it before. Uh, but anyways, let's put the nitrous plate on it now and see what we got. And what we have is a perfectly smooth transition between intake manifold and nitrous plate. But whilst we can just use a standard carburetor gasket, albeit a little cut up, we'll have to cut the opening bigger, right, to fit this to this. We can use a standard carburetor gasket to fit this to that and to fit the carburetor to this. But in order to fit this to the intake, I don't want to use a regular carburetor gasket. We are going to use some silicone. Because trying to fit an actual gasket gasket in between here is going to be just a giant pain in the butt. And really, this is all one unit now. I mean, we don't necessarily need it to come back apart, but I still want that to be an option if, you know, for some reason I want to use this plate on something else. So silicone, yes, it will seal it, but it's not impossible to remove. But, you know, right. Now, I know what you're going to say. You can't use silicone with gasoline. Or at least one person is going to say that out of however many people watch this video. And uh, my answer to that is, yes. Yes, you can. It's fairly standard practice. And really, the silicone is going to be in between these two plates. Fuel's not even going to get in there. It's going to just sling by. It's going to be fine. So why don't we silicone this thing down and just get that over with? All right, that's all we're doing. Just very thin layer. It does not need to be a bead or anything. All right, we got it all bolted down, so it's squishing everything. As you can kind of see, we got just a little bit of seepage, which is perfect. And we're just going to come and... There we go. Perfect. Just smooth all that out. And we now have that done. Okay, good. All right, now that that's accomplished, the only things I have left to do are get the uh, thermostat housing, which is currently on the tunnel ram, stick that on this intake. I have to put in the distributor, easy. Uh, spark plugs I'd rather do out here than in the car because in the car next to the shock towers, it's very tight. So I'll just do it out here while it's out here, right? And alternator, which I have an alternator on order. I think it's on forever back order, so I might just have to bite the bullet and buy one that's not on back order because I'm gonna I'm switching it to a one wire distributor just to clean up a bunch of wiring. I mean, there's no point in you know one wire, call it good, and it's simple as that, right? So I'm switching it to a one wire alternator. I'm just gonna have to get another one because the one I have is on forever back order, and once it arrives. Maybe this brand new alternator I just buy is going to be dead. So maybe it'll all work out that way. Because new parts suck. And after that, the engine's done. I mean, check it. that It's, it's complete. Throw some oil in it and... Yeah. Now, putting it in the car requires engine mounts. And let me show you what the engine mount situation is. Now, if you do happen to go back and rewatch that live stream where we pulled this thing out, you will know I never had to undo engine mounts because they were both broken. Very conveniently broken. So, yeah. Perfect, right? Uh, actually, the thing probably had broken engine mounts for a long time. I actually fixed it using a chain. I chained around this mount and bolted it up to the... Uh, motor mount uh, bolts on the side of the block there and that worked really well but instead of doing that again this time i got brand new engine mounts which are right here now these are polyurethane mounts check that out unlike the old rubber mounts these are a lot stiffer so between having regular old rubber mounts 
and having a solid mount, which solid mount would be just here directly to the chassis of the car. Uh, polyurethane is a good compromise because it's a lot stiffer than rubber. So it's going to, you know, not just let the engine flop around like rubber does, but it's still going to absorb a lot of the, you know, a lot of the vibrations and stuff that's coming out of this thing. And if you notice the design here, unlike the old stock ones where the rubber block was just mounted here and then, you know, you had a mount on either side of the rubber block, which the rubber bro block broke in half, right? That's the whole, you've seen it in there. This actually captures the polyurethane block, you know, with these two right here. And this bad boy goes right through the center. Well, not the center, but goes right through the polyurethane block. So that's a far better design than what actually was on the car to begin with. Now, being that means this is a different design. This is like a later style mount. This is a 65, so it has the early style mounts. You know, these bad boys here. Where these newer mounts require this bracket to go to the frame. So we just got to take that off, put this on, right? And then the new motor mount will sit over this and bolt through just like, you know, right here. So it'll look just like that. Which, you know, a whole lot beefier than, again, that whole setup. Where it's really just that one little, yeah. Now, the new style is going to be a lot beefier. And after destroying my back, the new mounts are even in. Check that out, huh? That was uh, a lot more difficult than I had planned for. Uh, but any hoozle, uh, one other benefit to these things that I didn't even consider until I took the old ones out. These things are freaking heavy as hell. They're, you know, cast iron, I guess. I mean, this thing has to weigh on its own, like, freaking, I don't know, five, seven pounds. I mean, it is a chunk of metal. Uh, these things, stamp steel, well, I mean, not stamp steel, but, you know, they're, they're way lighter. So, that's also a benefit. You had weight loss. Who I didn't even consider that, but there we go hidden gems all around all the time. So again, thank you to Cardi uh, parts.com for sending me those. So they are uh, definitely going to come in handy. Okay. Well, I think that's all I, the work I want to do today. Uh, I got to let that silicone dry and popping in the distributor won't be nothing. I think I want to uh, wait to put the distributor in because I'm going to fill it up with oil and I'm going to pre, pre lube it, uh, you know, stick the thing down and activate, you know, with the drill. So, uh, yeah, I think that's all she wrote for today. I guess it's time to send off the XMC carburetor to Joseph Nowak to have him flow that. So that'll be good. Oh, uh, I got steel braided line here too. That's going to replace the transmission cooler lines because, well, the old uh, steel ones are uh, all bent up and janky and disgusting and they got rubber hoses at the end that constantly leak. And so we're just going to go, I, you know, this was cheap enough. So I'm replacing that while we're at it. All kinds of stuff going on. All right. Well, Let's, uh, let's go. All right, well, we're here at the UPS, and uh, this is the final send-off. Well, not final, final, but it's the send-off of XMC with the 850 base plate on the 600 main body. So, let's go ship her off, and hopefully we'll figure out what this does eventually. I don't know exactly when he'll be able to get around to it, but when he does, you'll, you'll know. You'll see it here. All right, but after that, this is pretty much the end, so that's it for now, and we'll catch you next time, right?
sure. Yeah. Confidence. That's what I love. Mm -hmm.